with you. Go ahead and vote. But God's people's got something to do. The whole promise in this scripture is, is predicted on what God's people does. God don't look to Hollywood or the government, but to his people. He looks to us, the church, the born again. And if America falls or fails, it's going to be our fault. It's not God's fault. It's not our duty to persuade God to sin revival. Now, now you hear me. I've had people say, oh, let's have a revival, preacher. Let's have a revival. Well, the rascals is not paying their tithes, not coming to church, not living right, talking about their neighbor and all. God can't have a revival with that kind of people. Huh? Thank you, Mike. Go ahead, he said. Go on. But God can't have a revival of that. But I've had people look me right in the eye, and I know right, right well they needed revival. <laughs> but it's not our duty to persuade God to send revival. But we must pre prevent, permit him to do so. And what that means is to permit him to do so, it's going to begin here in the house of God. Yeah. 1 Peter 4 and 7 says it begins in the house of God. The hope of America is not in the White House or the State House or the School House. It's in God's house this morning. Now, look at the next thing that's in, in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. It says, humble themselves. Well, let me tell you, this country, this country reeks with pride. We strut in the face of God and we stand out in the streets and all and we mock him. And we say there is no God. God can't bless an individual. He can't bless a church and he can't bless our nation when we've got such pride. Yeah. Pride is the root of all evil. America today is filled with humanistic and haughtiness. The Bible says that we are to humble ourselves. And James 4 and 6 says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yes. America needs grace this morning. Grace is both a desire and ability to do the will of God. God puts a desire in your heart and gives you the strength to live as you ought to. Yes. So if you stand here today... And I've had people look me right in the eye, and so has all you other preachers. It's so hard to live a Christian life. I can't live a Christian life. I'm going to tell you, God's Word says otherwise this morning. God's Word says otherwise this morning. So, now the next thing. Moving right, trying to move right on down. I want to get it all to you if I can. Next thing is Pray. Pray. Well, God don't hear every prayer. I got news for you. He won't hear a prayer if you pray it with unconfessed sins. Now, you say, oh, preacher, you mean to tell me he don't hear me every time I cry out? No. The prayer that God hears is the prayer that seeks his face with a clean heart. In America, we ain't seeking his face. We're seeking his hand. We're, revival is when God can turn his countenance toward us and smile upon us. And do you think God can smile upon America today? I don't think so. Most Americans are seeking God's hand. We want God to do something for us. We only call out on his name when we want him to do something for us. When we need help. When we need a blessing, when we need a financial, when we need a touch, call out on him when we need something from him. That's the only time that we call out on him. So, God is our only hope, but also he's our biggest threat. God's going to judge us. Pray for revival without repentance is like, is, is a religious joke. It ain't going to happen. Why should God bless America again when we're just killing babies one right after the other and killing each other? I'll add that in there too. The murder rate 
and then we're killing each other with all these drugs and all. And I, might I say this this morning? There have been 86 people die of COVID-19 in, the, in the Knox County this year. There's been over 300 people die of drug overdose in Knox County this year. I have seen five or six of them because I've worked those scenes. But they've been 86 dive coded, 300 drug overdose. You say, oh, preacher, I can't do anything about that. Could if the church would get right with God, we could. The church would get right with God. Why should God bless America when he's cursed, defamed, can't even be mentioned in public places? God will not bless America unless we turn from our wicked ways. To pray without repentance angers God. Now, I want to read this to you, if I can, if I can find it right quick. In Psalms chapter 80, and verse number 4 says, O Lord God of hosts, how long will thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? So listen, folks. You pray, and you're not right with God. It angers God. You say, I'll get his attention. You'll get his attention, all right. Joshua is a, is a good example, too, moving along. Joshua, if you remember about them, and he was talking about this pride and this praying, and all Joshua in chapter 7. Boy, we see, we see old Joshua leads these people into battle. They go in, and they take the city of Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down. They said, man, we're it. We, the children of Israel, said, we're it. And then they said, well, we got another little city over here. We got to go whip. That's Ai, two little, two little words in a little city. They go over there, and they get whipped just like a bunch of whipped puppies. People get killed, and they come back, and they go to crying, moaning, groaning, and asking God. And even old Joshua, you remember the story I told you before? He just he laid down on the ground and he's on his face, and he's just a crying and carrying out to God. And, and I, I preached this one time before, and I said, I, I think God feels like this coming and kicking him, saying, Get up. Yeah. Get up. Because he said, oh, what's wrong? And he, God just simply tells him that you got sin and pride in the camp. That's what's wrong. You can't win a battle with that combination in the camp. So, prayer is not some kind of smoke screen in which we can hide our pride and our sin. And also, the word repentance... Is in there in here. There must be repentance, folks. Now people don't like to hear this, and people don't like to hear this, but I'll give you some statistics and I'll move on with that. I know my time's coming unto a close. But repentance is mentioned in the Bible nine hundred and sixty nine times. The first message that Jesus Christ preached was to repent. The last me message that Jesus Christ gave to the church was to repent. The message that God has given us today is repent. Luke 13 and 3 says, I tell you, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. I believe there's something to this repentance, don't you? And, and let me tell you, real hurriedly, real, real hurriedly, right quick. People say, well, repentance, I feel sorry. I, I mean, I mean uh, I, I'm convicted of what, what I do. Well, let me, t let me just give you three or four real examples right fast. Acts 24 tells you about Felix. Oh, Felix was convicted of his sin, but he didn't repent. Exodus 9 and 23, Pharaoh confessed his sin, but that was when the fire and the hell come down. But the conviction that was born in the storm died in the calm because he didn't repent. And repentance is more than just being sorry for your sin. Tears, now here, listen, I'm not making fun. Tears may accompany repentance, but tears are not repentance. 
2 Corinthians 7, 10. And again, I'm trying to close. And you know me, sometimes I try to close for an hour. I heard you, Rick. For godly sorrow, 2 Corinthians 7, 10 says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Let me tell you, godly sorrow worketh repentance. So the word repentance is turning. Change of mind. We got to turn from our wicked ways according to what the scripture says. And we got to seek God's face. Acts 20, 21 says repentance toward God and faith toward our, excuse me, Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance and faith are both necessary for getting right with God. If you don't repent of your sins, hear me. If you don't repent, truly repent of your sins and by faith trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're not going to make a change. Same thing goes for being saved. You've got to truly repent of your sins and make a change and by faith accept him as Lord and Savior. So repentance is a heart change and a whole, wholehearted change. We shouldn't get rid of the idea that we can get rid of God in one area without getting rid of God, getting right with God. I'll read it in a, right in a minute in all areas. In other words, here. You can't repent for your drug snorting and not for, for repent for your sleeping around with everybody's wife. You've got to give it all to him. All to him this morning. I'm trying to be frank with you this morning because church, we need some people. We need some people that get right with God and we need America to get back to God, our church to get back to God, and then we'll see these young people saved, healed, delivered, and set free in the name of Jesus Christ. So, repentance is not, is not gradual. It's once and for all, now and, for, now and forever, being sick of your sin and turning from it. Ezekiel 14 and 6. Let me read that to you right quick. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all, all abominations. All abominations. I've got more here, but I'm going to try to close here just right, right now. The reason we don't pray, though, and we don't seek his face, is that word pride. As I said earlier, Proverbs 6 simply tells us seven things that God hates, and pride is at the top of the list. It's at the top of the list. But look at this. Look at this. Let's end. In Second Chronicles seven fourteen, when we read that to you, and when we always read, read that, we read the whole thing to you. But here's the promise. Here's the promise. If we who are called by his name shall humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways, then, then, and only then will you hear from heaven, and then and only then will he forgive your sin, and then and only then will he heal your land. So, let me tell you, it's not too late for America. It's not too late for this church. It's not too late for your church preachers. But it's time to get back to the truth and the right, which is God's holy word. Because I want to tell you, God's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. i tell you what he is. He is King of Kings, and he is Lord of Lords. That's who he is this morning. That's who we serve today. The mighty God who rules the heavens will hear us, forgive our sins. And I'm going to tell you, God would rather pardon you than judge you. 
That's the kind of God that we serve this morning. We serve a loving God, a caring God. He is a forgiving God, a thoughtful God. I could go on and on. But he's on your side, folks. You say, oh, he's out to get me. No, no. He's out to save you, heal you, deliver you, strengthen you, uh, encourage you, and lift you up this morning. That's what he's out to do for you this morning. Yes, God's angry about our sins, but he's full of compassion and full of mercy. He's full of that. And he'll do exactly, he'll do exactly what he said we, he'll do. Now, church, have we, or America, have we crossed as, as uh, the preacher up here, Mike, what's his name, help me out, uh, uh, the deadlines of Christ, what's his name, uh, J. Harold Smith, J. Harold, yeah, God's three deadlines. Have we passed the deadline for America? I don't think so. I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. Jesus Christ has not come back yet to get to church. His mercy, his love, his kindness endureth until he comes back. Endureth forever and forever is what Scripture says. But the church gets right, begin to do what we ought to do, we can deal with the other problems that surround us. But we have to get right first. You're going to see other people saved. We've got to stop blaming other people and look at ourselves. Start looking at yourself. You say, they're the cause that I can't come to church. They're the cause that I can't enjoy my salvation. They're the cause that I can't. No, no, no. It's the devil that's the cause that you can't enjoy your salvation. I've told you before, I can enjoy my salvation with people that has talked about me, lied about me, and done things against me. I can come in here and I can absolutely enjoy my salvation because I know he saved my soul. I know he's not going to leave me. And I know I'm his until the very end of time throughout eternity. So this morning, no, we need to quit blaming others. No, I don't believe we've crossed the line or I don't believe the deadline is here yet. But I do say this, church, we don't need to put it off any longer. America, we don't need to put it off any longer. We need to get back, get right with God, Get in his holy word and praise his name. Now, for you that don't know him as Lord and Savior this morning, you say, Preacher, you said you wasn't talking to me, but now I am. If you're in the building or if you're outside or if you're on Facebook, if we're still on Facebook, and you're watching this morning and you say, I don't know this Lord and Savior, this King of Kings, this Lord of Lords you're talking about. Let me tell you, it's very simple. If the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, you have to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. I can't draw you. I can't make you. But if the Holy Spirit's telling you you're lost and you need a Savior, right now, wherever you're at, you need to look up and you just need to say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn from them. I leave them right here. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you went to the tomb. But I believe that that third day you come out defeating death, hell, and the grave. I believe you ascended to heaven on that 40th day. And most of all, I believe that through all the things that's going on, you're coming back to get the born-again believers one day. If you can believe that by faith, the Bible says you can be saved this morning. If you want to come to the music, you've got a song. If you want to come to that, if you'll stand with me for just a minute, just a minute. 
If you need to pray about anything this morning, if you need to pray this prayer, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen this morning, if you need to humble yourself, turn from your wicked ways, whatever it is, if you need to be saved, if you just need to pray for somebody, this time right here at the altar, time is yours. We'll social distance, but I'm going to ask you this morning if you need to come, you come.